right, so we've discovered that if we approximate the uh, wave function for a helium atom as the product of two different 1s orbitals, a 1s orbital for electron 1 and a 1s orbital for electron 2, and just somewhat naively write the total wave function for the helium atom as a product of the two things, we were able to do pretty well at recovering the full energy of the helium atom. We were able to get about 98% of the way there. Uh, this general idea taking a many electron wave function, electron wave function that depends on two variables, R1 and R2, and writing it as a product of some purely one electron function for R1 and another function for R2, uh, functions that we may understand something about already. That idea is called uh, a Hartree product. If I represent a many electron wave function as a product of multiple one electron functions, that's called taking a Hartree product of the one electron wave functions. It turns out, though, that we don't, we're not restricted just to just using the 1s wave function um, when we take our Hartree product. The 1s wave function, remember, is one of the solutions of the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. We just used it because it was a reasonable looking spherical uh, orbital that we can put electrons into. But more generally, we don't, we're not restricted to just using 1s. We can say, let's make up any one electron function we want for electron one. and any other function we want for electron 2. Maybe they could be the same or maybe they're different. And then for those one electron functions, remembering that the wave functions, the hydrogen atom wave functions themselves are a complete basis, like the postulates of quantum mechanics tell, them they, tell us they should be. So any function I want, regardless of what this function is, what I want it to be, I can write that function as the 1s wave function multiplied by some coefficient plus a 2s wave function multiplied by some coefficient, and then I can continue and add a 2px wave function, and as many of those as I care to include. So if I included the full list of all infinite number of the uh, hydrogen uh, wave functions, then I could represent any function I want. So the best function to use here, I may not know what it is, but I can write it as a sum, a linear combination of these hydrogen uh, functions. And then if I use these coefficients as my variational parameters, if I take derivatives and say what value of C1s and C2s and C2bx give me the lowest possible variational energy, then I'll do better than if I only include the first term. So to write that out a little more fully, my helium wave function I could write as uh, actually first let me say that this, I can write the uh, one electron function as a sum of coefficients times wave functions. Remember these hydrogen wave functions I can describe as uh, with a set of quantum numbers n, l, and m. So each of those has its own set of coefficients. And if I sum over all the n's and all the l's and all the m's, then uh, this is how I'm writing my one electron wave function. And I just use the product of one of these for electron one, another one for electron two, if I then use the CNLMs as my variational parameters to decide what the optimal value of these parameters are that will give me the lowest possible value of the energy when I use this particular trial wave function, then I can do a better job than if I just say a 1s times a 1s. Obviously, this becomes a little bit complicated because there's a lot of coefficients to take the derivatives with respect to. So this is the point where we begin to use computers to do these calculations instead of doing the calculations on paper. But the, the approach is still the same. It turns out, of course, that among when I solve for the optimal value of all these coefficients, the value of the C1s coefficient is pretty close to 1. The, the wave function for a helium uh, atom, the two electrons in a helium atom, looks a lot like two 1s electrons. Uh, so it's mostly uh, 1s electrons, but if I include a little bit of the 2s wave function in there as well, that improves the, the wave function, improves the energy a little bit. So uh, the general idea then is to, to use a linear combination of all the wave functions we have access to, to write one electron functions, combine those one electron functions in a Hartree product to get a trial function, and then plug those into the variational theorem and, and find the optimal wave function from that point.